Assalamu alaikum everyone, myself Dr. Ayaz and uh, again I'm going to discuss with you a very important topic uh, at a glen section of PNMDP the neonatal respiratory care for babies born preterm what NICE recommends so here I will just uh, discuss with you a short uh, summary of the NICE guideline uh, which was uh, uh, written by Anna Rogers and Chenton Singh in the journal ADC and practice BMJ so let's start with uh, some scenario so for example a 29 week born um, in a good condition and he developed increased work of breathing so the question is how I should manage again the second scenario is a 31 weaker who is uh, ventilated uh, and uh, his blood pressure is uh, 28 by 23 perfusion is good and vitals are normal how I should manage and the third scenario is uh, a 27 weaker and he's on invasive ventilation from the last 12 days should I start giving steroid therapy so here first of all I will discuss with you uh, the identified risk factors for BPD so these are the low gestational age, low birth weight, small for gestational age, male sex, core body temperature less than 35 on admission to neonatal unit, invasive ventilation began within 24 hours of birth, clinical sepsis with or without positive blood culture, feeding with formula milk exclusively or in addition to the breast milk, treated with the surfactant and treated for a PDA and cardiopulmonary resuscitation performed at birth less than 30 weeks. According to the NICE, what uh, ventilation strategies we should opt? So at delivery room, CPAP is recommended instead of invasive ventilation providing the baby has adequate respiratory drive and aim for oxygen saturation should be between 91 to 95% and remember if more than 2 liter per minute of oxygen is required, humidified oxygen should be used. The known invasive ventilation include the uh, high flow oxygen therapy or uh, the CPAP and in invasive ventilation uh, according to the NICE uh, one should use volume targeted ventilation with synchronized ventilation and if uh, uh, volume targeted ventilation is unavail unavailable example in cases of the air leak one should use the SIMV and uh, always try to avoid the synchronized pressure limited ventilation. According to the NICE, uh, for nitric oxide there is evidence of harm in routine use for RDS but uh, it is beneficial if uh, we are using for pulmonary hyperplasia or pulmonary hypertension. And the NICE recommends permissive hypercapnia and recommended carbon dioxide threshold should be 33 to 63 mm of Hg on day 1 to 3 and 33 to 75 mm of Hg from day 4 onwards. And what pharmacological therapy the NICE recommend? Obviously, the first one is the surfactant and minimally invasive surfactant therapy is preferred if the baby does not require invasive ventilation. NICE recommend pre-medication before uh, uh, invasive ventilation. A morphine infusion should not be routinely used unless there is evidence that the baby is in pain. Caffeine always should be given to babies less than 30 weeks gestation or any preterm babies with apnea as there is evidence uh, as well that caffeine uh, reduces the incidence of BPD, cerebral palsy and blindness. Consider uh, dexamethasone in preterm babies who are still requiring invasive ventilation for RDS after 8 days of life. NICE doesn't recommend the other steroids. Uh, However, the European Consensus Guidelines on the Management of RDS in 2019 update recommends uh, to consider the inhaled budesonide in infants at high risk of BPD. What can I continue to do? Uh, administer surfactant to all preterm infants requiring invasive ventilation, allow permissive hypercapnia and treat hypocapnia, support parents. What should I start doing? Number one, train staff in minimally invasive surfactant administration. Use VTV as a first line ventilation strategy. Consider dexamethasone if a baby is still ventilated for RDS after eight days. 
should I not do? Number one, don't routinely intubate infants due to prematurity. Number two, don't use synchronized pressure limited ventilation. Number three, don't routinely use morphine infusion for babies requiring respiratory support who are not in pain. Treat isolated hypotension without coexisting sign of poor perfusion. And these are my references. Thank you very much.